Hello everyone. Welcome back to week four of playing with abstract art with me, Katrina. And this week is actually my favorite week of the series and it is playing or experimenting with materials. So before we get started, if I could ask you to do one thing. So you're probably gonna have to pause the video after I explain what that thing is. So I'd like you to have a little hunt around the house that you're in and find some objects. Uh, so things that we're gonna be playing with. So for me, I find a plastic fork and I find a little container which has a lovely little um, pattern on it. I have found just some card, a bit of card that I'm going to cut into with my scissors. And I have found some tape. Some... If you have masking tape, that's even better. But if you don't, we can still work with the tape. Um, I find an, a little, another little jar. So I've got two jars. And then today I'm actually going to be experimenting a little bit with paint. So I've also hunted out some paint, find some paint at home. I'm just using two colours. So if you've got any paint at all, maybe today or this week is a good time to start playing with that. But don't feel like you need to have paint. If you have pastels, colours, pens, whatever you can find to make marks. I've also got some extra tissue paper for when I'm using the paint. And yeah, so you might want to pause your video now and have a look. So what you're wanting to find is something that's got an interesting texture like this little uh, container. Um, oh yes, sorry, you, if you're using paint, you're also going to need a little tray. I'm just using a normal plate. You could use maybe a takeaway box or a bit of plastic if you don't want to use plates. But if you're using acrylic paint, it's easily washed off. Um, so yeah, if you want to have a look around for some interesting find objects that you might want to play with. So now you've got your objects. There's one thing that I didn't mention as well, store cards. So I've got a lovely little store card that I um, don't really use anymore. So I'm going to play with that as well. Oops, scissors. So before we get started, I want you to find a comfortable seat. So either sitting on your bottom or sitting on your knees or in a chair. And we're going to allow our palms just to rest wherever is comfortable. And maybe shrugging our shoulders back and down, creating a little bit of space for our neck. And when you're ready, just gently closing your eyes. And bringing your awareness to your breath. Following your inhale all the way in. And all the way out. Just let yourself really sigh that breath out. So let's do that again. Inhale through your nose. And really sigh out through your mouth. Exhaling. Do that one more time. Inhale. And out through your mouth. So before we begin our art practice, we're just going to take a little moment just to check in with ourselves. So maybe asking yourself how you're feeling today. Checking in how your energy levels are. So are you feeling like you've got a lot of energy? Maybe you're feeling a little bit sleepy. We're just checking in with yourself. We're not judging at all. We're just taking a little note, seeing how we're feeling. Bringing our awareness back to our breath, inhale. And just watching our body as we change with each breath. So watching how our bodies move with our inhales, our chest starts to rise. And as we exhale, our chest starts to fall and relax. Inhaling, creating space within our bodies. And as we're exhaling, we're just relaxing into our seat. Feeling as though the crown of your head is really extending towards the ceiling. And the base of your spine is rooted into your chair. And if you're sitting on a chair, maybe your feet 
are also firmly rooted in the ground below you. And for a couple of moments, we're just going to watch our breath really feel into our bodies. So can we feel our whole body sitting? Can we feel the little pulse in the tips of our fingers? Can we feel our spine nice and aligned and straight? And with that awareness of our bodies, how is our breath? We're not trying to force or restrict our breath in any way. We're just simply watching it rise and fall. And so maybe in this quieter space, we might want to set a little intention for our practice. Maybe that's a little intention of fun. Maybe it's playfulness. Maybe it's to let go of any fear. So whether you're cultivating something or letting go of something, just keep that in your mind for a little moment. Inhaling. Filling your whole body with breath. And as you exhale, just releasing that. We'll do that one more time. Inhale through your nose. Fill your body. And as you exhale, sign it out your mouth. And release. Starting to visualize our space, the space that we're in today. Feeling a sensation of our base of our spine really rooted in the chair below us. And when we're ready, we just want to gently open our eyes. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> that was lovely. So what we are going to do today, favorite class, we're going to be playing with materials, as I said, but we're not going to be doing it in the usual kind of way. So yes, we've got paint brushes. Yes, we've got pencils or pens or crayons or whatever you're using. But what I'm asking you to do is maybe to not use them in the usual way that we would think. But instead, we're going to experiment and, and see if there's other ways of doing things. OK, and this is why we're using some of these little materials, because, you know, we can start to spread the paint, maybe. Uh, maybe we can paint onto our little surfaces and we can start to print some nice uh, textures and uh, we could use our well we could use our fork and we could start to scrape and this is this is more so for paint okay but the same can go with any other material you know if you're using pencils for instance and you start to um you know color in in some way or create some marks what happens when you start to add water to that paint to that pencil what happens when you start to rub the pencil okay so how do we how do we play with that material and what happens when we play differently what sort of different effects uh, occur and what sort of new techniques do you discover so there's again there's no rights or wrongs it's all just play 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 and these are working drawings they're not meant to be finished pieces okay so they're they're just opening up things for you and experimenting. So um, there's a little task that I'm going to ask for you to do and it doesn't take long. So you can either work like me um, and have the paper up close to you, you can work with it flat on a table or you could even work with it on the floor, okay? Especially if you're using paint, sometimes it's nice to pour things and get messy. Um, and you can do that inside or outside. It's a lovely uh, weather at the minute. So you can make the most of that if you've got access to garden space or a yard space. So um, first of all, what we can, what we're going to do is I'm going to say a few words and I'd like you to react to that. Okay, we're going to start. So I'm going to do it with you. 
and we're gonna see wh what happens. So I'll be making marks, but I don't really want you to be copying those marks at all. You can just, you know, check in with yourself and how you're feeling and what marks you want to make. You know, we can carry on from the weeks before. Maybe you have some music on and you're playing with music. Maybe you're um, checking in with how you're feeling and you're expressing your emotions, okay? So again, you could choose a color depending on your mood or how you're feeling um, or depending on the music you're listening to. So we're continuing each week uh, and we're developing with those weeks. So you can dip back into some of the previous weeks and I would definitely encourage that with this class. So I'm going to ask you to, we'll get started now with that, with this task. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is uh, tearing, okay? So we're gonna play with tearing. So what does that, how do we do that? So do we actually tear this paper? Okay. Just go with it, tearing. So where do you want to tear? It might not even be on the page. Okay, like I've torn that, but I'm not sure about that. I'll take that off. So it could also be with some of the materials you find. So if there's some materials that you can tear and you can work with like that, I'd go for it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I'm just kind of going to weave this. It's just, I got that idea just there now. So I'm just going to go with it, but it's up to you guys what you just want to do. It's your art piece. Okay, you just keep going with that tear. So I quite like the torn edge of the paper. So I might bring my, bring a little bit of torn to all of my edges. just keep going with that for yourselves and the next thing that we're going to do is some crushing so you can crush something else okay and make a little pattern which is what I'm actually going to do or you can crush your actual um you can maybe crush your canvas or your bit of paper and see what textures that what that what effects that makes so just play, what does crushing mean to you? It can mean anything, there's no rights or wrongs. For me, I'm just gonna make some marks. Ooh. And that's, you know, you probably wouldn't get that sort of effect with a, uh, with a, a pad, with a paintbrush, sorry. I quite like that it's a little circular shape. Then maybe I add some orange to that. Whoa, went a bit wobbly there. So crushing, crushing. So how are we doing this? Okay, I'm technically I'm dabbing as well. Well, dab. Not the dancey dab. So. Ooh, that looks quite nice. So crushing. Crushing could also mean maybe the lead, if you're using pencils, do you start crushing the lead into the page if that's possible? I'm trying to now, it's not really possible for my pencil, but maybe you're using charcoal, that's a really lovely way of crushing. So how do you play with your materials? And that is what we're trying to do. So crushing, 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 okay? And then we're going to head over to, we're gonna try some, uh, scraping okay so scraping this is what I've been waiting to use this for so let's see what happens when we scrape some of the paint oh it's quite nice So 
So I'm scraping up and down with my little, my little, can you see that? So scraping, so that could mean anything really. Um, it could mean scraping with card. It could mean scraping with your fork. If, you, if you're using forks, I might quite like this maybe coming down from here. Scraped, great. And again, this is kind of just, you're just playing here, you know, it's not really, it doesn't have to look like anything in particular. You're just experimenting with the material and, and seeing what sort of techniques are working and what sort of uh, marks you're really excited about. Okay, so don't worry if it's if it's maybe not looking perfect. We don't want, we're not trying to make anything look like a, a, a painting as such. We're just experimenting with marks. So the next, uh, the next piece, the next um, action is, whoops, pressing. So how does press, how are we going to play with pressing, okay? For me, I'm going to press in my little, um, my little tub with lots of lovely patterns at the bottom of it. So um, I'll just show you a close up. See the little crisscross designs that we have there? So this is where I use my paintbrush. And that's probably the only time I'm going to use my paintbrush. So I don't actually know what this is going to look like. So, whoops, it's a bit of an experiment for me too. If you want to continue with this page, you can. If you want to try another page, it's up to you. Oh, okay. So you're pressing. So how does pressing, what does that mean to you? What I've found is as I'm pressing, it's it's got two little patterns. So I might... I'm actually going to do it now. I'm going to just cut out the little pattern that I really like because uh, the other trimming of it is not really working. And this is this is the thing that I mean by you'll only really um, you'll only really figure out what's working after you try it. You know, so we have to try things to figure out how to improve them. So. I'm going to see if that works better. Oh, it's kind of stuck to it. Technically, I could leave that there and it could be part of a, a collage, but I'm going to just remove it and see. Oh, it leaves this really lovely underwater kind of mark. Ooh, that's lovely. Okay. And so after, I would really encourage you to spend more time on each, each of these. We're kind of flying through them at the minute, but you could easily spend maybe 10 minutes on each of these little actions. So next we're doing covering. So what I'm going to do is get my sellotape out and uh, I'm going to think about covering with the sellotape and see what happens there. If I can open it. <laughs> so, and what I would say, if you're using sellotape, uh, Mask and tape might be okay, but actually with either mask and tape or sellotape. So you get off however much you're wanting to use, and then I would put it on your clothes or your skin or something that's gonna take some of that stickiness off because we don't want to tearing our, our paper when we put it onto our paper. So for me, I'm just gonna go right hmm, there, okay? And then I am going to uh, get my little dabber, my little crusher, and I'm gonna just crush. I'm just gonna go across where I stuck that sellotape down. Okay, I'm just playing, play, play, play. And then I'm going to peel my tape off and I will get this lovely straight line. So, put that there for now. See that lovely line? And you could really play with that. See that lovely orange straight line? That's where I've taken the sellotape off. Okay. Um, what I might do as well is rolling. I might do another action. It's not really one that we were planning on doing, but I've just kind of figured out I might want to roll these little pieces down that I've put 
up so you can't really see what I'm doing there. I'm just rolling these down. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And actually, it's a little bit more sculptural for me, you know, that's coming off the page. There's a liveliness to the to the work itself. It's not just a flat, uh, two-dimensional bit of paper anymore. It's actually now three-dimensional because it is coming up off the page with my little rolls. So I could continue doing that. Um, and there's something quite nice about that. I think for me, what you could do now is just continue. If you can think of any other actions that might be good, with, there's the likes of pouring, there's the likes of scratching or printing. You could print your hand or you could print parts of your bodies. Um, and also I haven't really used my pencil. You know, you can start to uh, maybe add in some other materials and some, some uh, images that you've done maybe last week. So you might need to tape up your your little drawing if you're working on an easel or um, vertically. If you're on a table, then you're fine. But um, what there's lots of other materials that we might have got. Okay, so what I would do is keep experimenting. We might uh, run out of time today, but you know, there's uh, if you're using bottles or any sort of glass or or containers, you could be painting around the outside. Mm. And bringing that in some circles I really loved this piece that I done uh, last week I think it was so for me I want to keep developing this in some way so I've done a circle there and that's kind of this circle for me um, and then I'm I'm really interested in uh, that line from the last one so I'm gonna put that back in so it's gonna be Okay, I might bring my, might emphasize that circle a little bit. Um, okay, so it's up to you how you want to add your other materials. Yes, I was working with pencil and I drew on it and that's fine. Um, but can you loosen up with it as well? You know, can you do other things? If I start doing twist, if I start twisting with my hand, and doing this other action, so it's twisting, 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 twisting. What sort of marks does that make? Twisting, twisting, twisting. These really lovely subtle scratches, okay? And that's me twisting. Okay. And I might add some more of this. Ooh, it's got paint all over it. <laughs> so, I might add another one of these here, maybe emphasize that line a little bit so what I'm really saying is just experiment and play um, and don't be afraid of getting messy if you are quite a messy pup then maybe you want to work outside as I said um, and maybe not work with paint it's up to you. so what I would say um, so that's us kind of coming to an end now of this week uh, if you have time, please continue to experiment with your materials. Pressing, squeezing, pouring, rubbing. Whoa, there's a pour. Oops, that wasn't meant to happen. But you know what I mean? Like that's made a really nice, uh, nice runny mark. If that had been with paint and not the water, um, or if I had been using water paints, what happens when I start to pour some water onto that? So just thinking about how we can engage and play with the materials rather than knowing exactly what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Can we uh, go on a little journey with the materials and, and find out what we can learn from them and be open to making mistakes and trying new things and our next door neighbors started to do some gardening and banging. So I think that's my cue to, to wrap up for now. Um, I hope you've had a lovely uh, evening playing with abstract art and experimenting. Please 
share your works with us that would be amazing i'd love to see some work uh, the details are on the end of this video so if you'd like to email tanya and also if you'd like to subscribe to our channel you can just click the subscribe button and yeah uh, please keep safe and i'll see you next week thank you bye